like a lot of people, over the last few days, I've been playing Starfield. And it's fair to say that uh, Bethesda has been a bit of a hot topic over the last uh, week or so. Pronouns! And the character models look really great under the correct lighting. The character models look really great under the correct lighting. <laughs> Gender ambiguity! D4 is better than Starfield, and D4 is bad. Game breaking and immersion uh, ruining bugs everywhere. Current day Californians! <laughs> What the f is she looking at, man? That's a... What the f That's weird, like, what the hell? Why did you not optimize this game for PC? Uh, we did. It's running great. As a long-time Bethesda game fan myself, I can tell you that I too wholeheartedly despise Bethesda and almost every single thing that it stands for. Uh, but by God, do I love me some of that geriatric formula? Oblivion was probably the first game I put more than 500 hours into. I used to wake up at 5 a.m. every morning just so I could play a couple of hours of it before school. Exams can wait for Cyrodiil calls me. You know, how did I ever find the time to stop straight vibing to this music and pickpocket someone? How did I ever get anything done in the game? Oblivion music, man. It's something else. But never mind that, because we're here to talk about Skyrim. I, no, we're not. We're, um, we're talking about Starfield. That's the one. I've just been playing it. We're here to talk about Starfield. Now, I have just crossed the 24 hours of play mark. And when the game is good, it's pretty damn good. When the game is bad, it's really fun. Annoying. I know a lot of people have been talking about the formula and how it, it's very old at this point. And while I agree with that sentiment and understand fully why uh, people might be a little disgruntled, I am also a goldfish who will happily continue playing this formula because I have no brain or taste. If Bethesda is a dog owner, then I am said dog who sits there acting like they're Raymond Blanc every time they slap the same cold wet food down in front of me. Ooh, tasty! That was, uh, <laughs> that was a dog voice, that was. And if you would permit me to have a little bit of banter for just a moment, I do find it somewhat amusing that a lot of people seem to be getting very angry about the fact that Bethesda have made a Bethesda game. <laughs> Only Bethesda could catch heat like that. God damn, they've done it again. Bethesda have made another Bethesda game. Oh my... When are they not going to do this? When are they just not going to make a Bethesda... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, really. Bethesda are just really good at making Bethesda games. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, right? And we'll get right back to the video in just a moment, but if you would allow me to first address the proverbial elephant in the room, the large, white, square-shaped elephant. And that is that I'm now partnered with CyberPower PC UK to help provide you guys with better gaming PCs. Now, you might have seen that I built my own gaming PC the other week, and CyberPower saw this and they said, hey, that's cute, that's nice, that's a good first attempt, but why don't, you know, why don't you leave it to the professionals? We want to send you something that will help provide your audience with better next generation content. And I said, hey, that sounds like a pretty good idea to me. And here we are. It's every bit of my last PC turned up to the next level. We're going from a 30 series card to a 40 series card. We've doubled the speed of the storage. We're going from DDR4 to DDR5 RAM, an i5 to an i7 processor. Everything's been turned up to the next level. And it's all thanks to Cyberpunk PC UK. So if you are in the market for a new gaming PC, check the link down in the description. And I'm really happy and very proud to announce that they are new partners here on this channel. So thank you very much, guys. And I've got gigabit internet coming in this month. And with this now, live stream starting very soon. I'll see you there. Now when I'm playing, a Bethesda game, I always go for the thief assassin build. So, you know, the, the long range combat, the close quarters, stabby stabby, pickpocketing, stealth. It's, it, it's what you'd expect. If you've played Oblivion or Skyrim or Fallout, the same formula they've been using this whole time. So, you know, that's good, I guess. I'm used to it. The music is good. However, thanks to Hans Zimmer, and his goddamn interstellar soundtrack that everyone busts nuts over, every space soundtrack from then on has sounded the goddamn same. It's all Thank you, Hans. I know I'm in space now. Now, don't get it twisted. I like Hans Zimmer. He is a visionary. 
I think, you know, he's obviously, he's one of the best composers out right now. I think that the Pirates of the Caribbean theme song is one of the most iconic and identifiable theme songs written this century. Don't get it twisted. But if someone could come along and set a new standard for space music, that would be fantastic. That'd be fabulous. From the ships to the outfits and the weapons, a lot of really cool design has gone into this game. And so concludes my uh, praise slash defense of Starfield. And now to get into the things that rustle my jimmies. Now, I know what some of you might be saying. Some of you might be saying, hey, Johnny, there are mods. Just use mods. There are mods already out to solve 99% of problems in the game. And that might be the case. That might be true. But I am not here to judge the community's work. I'm here to judge what Bethesda have made. So just keep that in mind. I have not used any mods. I've been playing the vanilla game. And let's kick things off with bugs and glitches. Now I am unfortunate enough to have not run into any game breaking bugs and glitches. And I say unfortunate because to any fellow long time Bethesda game fans, you'll know that part of the charm of the games is that they are the only things in the universe more unstable than MMO players. Now, although I've not run into anything game-breaking, there has been a whole lot of janky maneuvers, a whole lot of not-so-standard procedures, particularly surrounding NPCs and dialogue screens. Before I hand you a badge, I need to know you can handle the job. You're looking splendid today, Captain. We really gotta do this. Yes, indeed we do, my good sir. And why do you have to be so pushy, huh? Well, I don't know, maybe it's because I feel like you're just talking out your ass. That's a low blow there. This is not the first time that Varun zealots have attempted to corner me. I don't know, lady. Seems an awful lot like you're the one doing the cornering around here. Might I also remind you that this, is, this character is supposed to be a master of stealth. Uh-huh. Seems like you're still trying to master basic motor function, but sure, we'll go with that. No worries, I've got something that'll sort you out. There you go, problem solved. And while I am impressed with the level of detail and design that's gone into uh, detailing, you know, cities and indoor areas with the various books, cups, props, utensils, etc. And it does make for very interesting indoor environments. But, but if they'd spent half as much effort on outdoor, out of city environments, as much as they did I don't know, this coffee machine? Or this so eloquently titled In Case to Alien Trilobite? If they'd put half as much effort into outdoor environments as they did these things, I can't help but feel like it would have been a little more interesting to explore planets. Hey, maybe it's just the planets that I've been to, but thus far, from what I've seen, it's it's been a little sparse. Not to mention the fact that when you're looking at the planets from space, some of them look like absolute garbanzo beans. This is the very first planet, well, moon, in the game. It's where every single player starts. And what an underwhelming way to kick off an interplanetary adventure with a 15 million square foot PS2 texture. You can see by the detail on the ship, I've not lowered the resolution in any way. This is a maxed out ultra settings. This is the very first thing you see and it looks like a cheap paving slab. There's a lack of cohesion and compression when it comes to complexity in this game. And by that, I mean that there are some aspects of this game that are unusually simple and there are others that are unusually complex. And the problem with this is you end up with a product that feels like it's been made by lots of different people or lots of different groups of people rather than one studio. It's like buying a jigsaw puzzle on Etsy, but rather than buying one puzzle off one seller, you go out and you buy one piece from lots of different sellers. Even if by some miracle, all of these pieces come together cleanly, the picture that you're going to have made might not look intentional. For example, shipbuilding. You know, it's got a lot of depth to it. I actually really quite enjoy it. It's like Bethesda meets Kerbal Space Program, except not quite as deep as that. It's got a lot going on. It's cool. So you can spend hours meticulously designing your own spaceship, but then you can't take off in that spaceship. It's just a cutscene. You can't travel inside a planet's atmosphere inside your ship. It just doesn't let you. You can't feasibly travel from point A to point B in space. Again, it's just another cutscene. Complex shipbuilding, only to sit in said ship, watching cutscenes. The simplest form of gameplay there is. 
you don't play. Also, why can you not set system levels before taking off? Is this not one of the first things you do if you were actually doing this in real life? So your ship has a given amount of power and you can choose which systems to funnel that power into. You have engine systems and you have weapon systems. That's simple enough. But let's say you're taking off and you know you're heading into a potentially hostile environment or communicating with another ship and it starts to go south. Can you ready your ship's weapons? No. You've just got to wait until you're unoccupied in open space and then you can sit there fiddling with your levels whilst hostiles attempt to obliterate you. That's that, that's a really cool feature. That's, that's really cool. Now, I know that everyone will have mentioned this already, but it cannot be mentioned enough. There is no map in this game. I mean, sure, it gives you the map of the planets, but when it comes to exploring on the surface, nothing. The one part of the Bethesda formula they actually decided to change is the map. And they did so by throwing it in the bin. Let's make the biggest, most expansive world we've ever made so far. But don't give them directions. <laughs> if that isn't the most Todd Howard move, I don't know what is. He's clearly still got some resentment built up inside him from the chess club. I'm gonna make video games and everyone's gonna play them. Like, you dork. Go back to the chess club. Who's laughing now? Yes, I was in the chess club. I have Google Maps on my phone in real life. But when I'm playing Starfield, exploring a city, I have to run around like a headless astronaut just to find a shop. I have been reading street signs in the game. When was the last time you read a street sign in real life? They have grav drives in Starfield, but not Google drives, apparently. They had more sophisticated means of navigation in oblivion. And by more sophisticated, I mean you had a piece of paper with some names written on it. Okay, yes, they do give you a map of the planets and the solar system. So, you know, you want to navigate your way to Alpha Centauri, no problem. But no map of planet surfaces. So, God forbid you want to find, I don't know, a post office. You're on your own. Good luck to you. If you told me Starfield was built in Morrowind's engine, I'd probably believe you. It might even be the truth which is a shame because Morrowind's a good game. Oblivion is my favorite, of course, closely followed by Skyrim. Shout out to the cultured Oblivion chads. But to be honest, I think that the engine is aging faster than the formula. <laughs> I am becoming very sick of the term open world game. Not because I don't want or like the freedoms that come with an open world game. My problem is not practical, it's more cultural. When a studio comes out and says, hey, we're making a new open world game and it's gonna be the biggest game you've ever played. I can't help but sigh for a very long time and then punch myself really hard in the penis. Because open world game these days just means, hey, we're giving you a bigger map and that's about it. Gameplay isn't bigger and better. The story isn't bigger and better. The music isn't bigger and better. It's just all of those things stretched over a bigger map. People talk about power creep being a problem in gaming. No, map creep is the biggest problem facing gamers today. And like I mentioned, you can't fully explore every planet. There's invisible walls everywhere, and this is why there's no transportation in the game. No cars, no mounts, no nothing. And that's because if there were, you'd very quickly realize that exploring this game is a little less like exploring the stars and a little more like exploring a field. In fact, they should just rename this to just field. Every field has a fence. There's your tagline. And the reason I bring up the scale of this game is because I've been playing another brand new RPG this week, more specifically a new JRPG called Sea of Stars, and it is phenomenal. It's one of the best JRPGs I've played since the likes of Persona 5 and Dragon Quest XI. Is it open world? No. Is the map gigantic? Again, no. Does that make the slightest difference? Not even a little bit. And if anything, it's a good thing, because by limiting the amount of space that the map takes up, by limiting the amount of environments, the ecosystems that it does have are just gorgeous, meticulously crafted, and are just fantastic to be in and explore. You know, limitations breed creativity, and that's why a lot of big open world games can often be quite monotonous to explore when you really get down to it but not Sea of Stars. There's woodlands, mesas, tundras, jungles, colorful places, eerie places, magical places, dark, stinky, dingy looking places, and let's not forget big blue foot fetish places. The characters are all interesting and have distinct personalities, and they can still convey this without any voice acting. The story is compelling, rich in lore, and has many interesting twists. Combat is rewarding for skilled players without making it unplayable for casuals. It rewards those who explore and interact with the world around them. And finally, the soundtrack 
is a damn masterpiece. With quippy motifs very reminiscent of old Pokemon soundtracks, it has all of the charm of old school bit crush music with all of the benefits of modern production. The makers didn't drop their trousers and start screaming about, look how big our map is. They were, by the way, actually kind enough to give you an actual map to help you navigate, but they didn't try to make the biggest RPG in the world. They just focused on making a good RPG with a nice balance of old beloved tropes and ideas with new elements and quality of life improvements. It's a boner inducing love letter to fans of JRPGs. I feel like I should point out that I've not been paid in any way to promote this game. Uh, it just so happens that it released around the same time as Starfield. I've been playing them both over the last week and I think it's a great example of expansive and unpolished versus refined and immaculate. You know, people are saying, hey, Starfield gets good after 12 hours. Okay, cool. Well, play 12 hours of Sea of Stars and tell me you don't get more value from it. I guess the point I'm trying to make is I no longer care about how big a game is. I just care about how good a game is. It's as simple as that, really. I don't care how far apart the planets are. I don't care how many thousands of solar systems you've got in your game. I just don't care anymore. Maybe you disagree, but I think that if they'd stuck with just a couple, maybe just a few fully fleshed out, fully designed, fully explorable solar systems with transports, that would have been a million times better than the thousands of planets that we can partially explore with no transports. Studios making game maps bigger is kind of like car manufacturers making top speeds faster. A lot of high-end cars will do more than 200 miles an hour these days. Guess who is never at any point doing more than 200 miles an hour? 99.999% of the owners of those vehicles. You won't even be doing 200 miles an hour on the track. Could that R&D time not have gone into any other number of areas that would have benefited the vast majority of those motorists? Do you get where I'm coming from? Ubisoft came out the other day and said, hey look, the new Assassin's Creed Mirage map is going to be the smallest we've made in years. And honestly, I could have cried. This is such good news to come from a AAA developer. Enough with the map creep, enough with the biggest game in the world. Enough of all that and just focus that energy into any other area in the game and 99.9% .9 of gamers will be much happier for it. So, in conclusion, just play Baldur's Gate 3. And of course, a big shout out to the patrons and the channel members. We have the top tiers. We have the Knights of Law, Flunky, Puzzle One, Infinite Dum Dum, Cost, Jax, David, ATS, Texas Lawman, Michael Turpia, Steve the Goat, St. Nemo, Daggerty69, Nice. Nystagmus, Digital EXE, and Michael. To all of you, thank you for your service and protecting the realm. Tier 2s, Sayi, Dr. Musky, Yarnwich, Hadzu, Kenneth Ogramachi, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Medic and Bias, Michael S, Rich Warwick, Kidnap Tiger, Magger and Jarek, and the Grand Admiral. To each and every one of the Tier 2s, thank you so much. And of course, a big thank you to the Tier 1s as well. To everyone on this list, you allow me to do what I do. So thank you very much for your support. And there we go, another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do, you little bitch. But until then, Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all very soon.